Father in heaven, you have promised to be our good shepherd. And today we pray, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. May we believe this promise today. Pour out your spirit upon us. Bring revival and reformation throughout this midday power surge is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this midday power surge, Thursday, March 3rd, 2022. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. Safe to Serve International, first time viewers, welcome one, welcome all to this midday power surge. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, I want to turn your attention to 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 12, where the Bible says, I will not be negligent to keep you, to put you always in remembrance of these things. Oh no, though you know them, because I want to establish you in the present truth. Beloved, we will be covering some things today which are going to be startling. In Revelation chapter 7, Verse 1 through verse 4, the Bible speaks of the great time of trouble when the winds of strife are going to be released. But right now, the winds of strife are being withheld. And what we're now seeing in the land, also over there in Ukraine and elsewhere, these things are a sample of what is to transpire in a few short months. Take a look at this, brothers and sisters. In the book, Education, I wonder, what are we told, brothers and sisters, in, in the book, Education? Well, take a look at this statement here. All right. Notice Ezekiel 21, verse 26, and verse number 27. The time is at hand, brothers and sisters, for the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's it. Everything in our world is in agitation. The red word. How may we know that time is at hand? How may we know that time is at hand? Nation shall rise against nation. Are we now seeing that, brothers and sisters? Take a look at this. The signs are here, brothers and sisters. And where I stopped in that paragraph, I'm going to close as we bring this to the final stretch of this presentation. Brothers and sisters, here's a great question. Is the battle, the war in the Ukraine real? Or is it fake, brothers and sisters? That's the great question. And while many individuals are posting articles and doing various videos to say that the battle is full, is fake, and so on and so forth, let me tell you something. This is one certainty that I have. And what is that certainty? This is real. There are real refugees. There are real sufferers. There are real deceased people who are dying and people who have died, brothers and sisters. So while they're focusing on that, let's focus on that which is real. Brothers and sisters, do you recall the idiom hmm, that says uh, the pot calling the kettle black? Hmm. I wonder what that means, brothers and sisters. The idiom simply means, right? It's used by a person who is guilty of the very thing of which he accuses another. That's it, brothers and sisters. And here is an example of the pot calling the kettle black, as we would say, the pot cursing the kettle as being black. Look at that, brothers and sisters from Russia, foreign minister likens the U.S. to Nazi Germany. Look at that, brothers and sisters. You know what that means. All right. Friends, I am aware of the Hegelian dialectic. I'm not uh, an amateur or novice at this. I'm aware of the propaganda news. I'm aware of the also uh, colloquial statement that says two wings of the same bird i'm aware of that but brothers and sisters something is also going on which is real look at that my friends Nine thousand troops dead is that true 
Is that false? I'm not here to get into that. If it's true, what are we told, brothers and sisters, why Satan delights in war? Hmm? It excites the worst passions of the soul. We are told, oh yes, brothers and sisters, and then sweeps into eternity its victims steeped in vice and bloodshed. Imagine that, brothers and sisters. 9,000 adding. Imagine what the number is going to be. If that is uh, true or fake, it doesn't matter to me right now. What is real? That's the great question. People who are suffering. People who are refugees. And when we begin to hear of various individuals who are refugees because of the crisis, now we begin to realize whether it's the Hegelian dialectic. It doesn't matter if these two powers are on the same team. Playing either side of the spectrum. People are suffering casualties of war, brothers and sisters. As I said to you two, three days ago, when elephants fight, it's the grass that suffers. Look at this, why I know the casualties are real. In Jamaica, about 20, 20 plus, 20 odd students became refugees because of the crisis in the Ukraine. Take a look at this, brothers and sisters. Listen. We start with an update on the group of 24 Jamaican students desperately seeking to exit war-torn Ukraine. Foreign Affairs Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith reported this morning that all students are now on their way to Poland after the planned bus ride was disrupted. The mm. Clip number two, listen. All 24 are now on the bus on their way to Krakow where accommodations will be waiting for them. Our charge is there. Our friends of uh, Jamaica have been uh, of the greatest assistance and they've had something warm and they are in uh, a comfortable uh, bus on their way. Following last... Thank you, Hillary. Beloved, I just received an email and we have been receiving several texts from individuals who have been refugees because of the Ukraine crisis. My wife just sent me this. This is a report. I'm going to leave. I'm going to redact the person's name, okay, and simply read the synopsis of what this person, a prof this is a Seventh-day Adventist Ukraine, Ukrainian refugee. Listen, we tried to get away from the shelling of Russian soldiers, but the Russian invaders did not let us through and we had to return home on the fire and shells we decided to go again and believe that the father would save us we had many experiences with god along this perilous journey on the way we saw dead ukrainian soldiers their entrails and body parts body parts were lying everywhere on the road along with military equipment that was destroyed by fire. We have seen a lot of grief, suffering, and tears of mothers, tears of mothers who have lost their children. Russian soldiers are killing civilians, and it all breaks my heart. I cry and pray to the Lord for all people. There are fierce battles, and the Ukrainian people are cut off from food supplies. That's just one. This thing is real, my friends. So don't get caught up with people who are trying to say, well, it's, it's, it's a fake battle, etc., etc." This is a real casualty of war. Brothers and sisters, take a look at this, my friends. I want everyone to watch this because we are told the things of the past will be repeated. And by the way, we will keep our brothers and sisters in our prayers as they are going through this turmoil. And that's why we have come to Midday Power Surge. Let's keep our brothers and sisters in prayers. Look at this, my friends. The things of the past will be repeated. There's no new thing under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse number 9 confirms that. As well as, my friends, when the winds are released, that's Revelation 7.
What can we expect? Simply look at what is transpiring now. All right, friends, take a look at this. How many refugees? Headline, how many refugees? Over a million brothers and sisters. You think about that. Over a million. And what are we told in the last days? God's remnant people, God's commandment-keeping people, God's seventh-day Sabbath-keeping people are going to be refugees in the time of the mark of the beast. Look at this, brothers and sisters. How much of this should I give you? Red words. It's speaking about the time of trouble. The great time of trouble when there is sword. That's famine and destruction and wars. Famine. Pestilence are all in the land. Brothers and sisters, read that statement. We're going to be refugees. No food. That's it. Houses and lands will be of no use to the saints in the time of trouble. For they will then have to flee from before infuriated mobs. We're going to be refugees, my friends. Next. There it is. I saw the sword, the famine, pestilence, and great confusion in the land. It says, blue words, in the time of trouble, we all fled from the cities and villages, but were pursued by the wicked who entered the houses of the saints with a sword. And the sword is not just literally, it's going to be whatever dagger whatever ammunition whatever weapon of destruction they can use to come against god's people when god's spirit is totally and completely removed from the unrepentant and satan takes full control brothers and sisters that's where we are next again what is to come in the near future we're seeing and samples in this Ukrainian crisis. And this has not been the first. We have seen many previously. These things are showing us what is to come. Goodbye, daddy. Goodbye, daddy. Headline, goodbye, daddy. We love you. Heartbreaking moment. Children wave emotional farewell to their fathers. Bottom paragraph, refugee count tops one million. What am I talking about, brothers and sisters? What am my friends? Family members are going to be separated in the near future, just as they are now being separated. Confirmation, my friends, there it is. The time is coming when we shall be separated and scattered. That's it. Am I ready? Are you ready? Next statement. Pause and read those quotes. Separation is coming, brothers and sisters. And right now, we are seeing economic sanctions on the Russians. And for some, rightfully so. But notice, when the mark of the beast is enforced, God's commandment-keeping people won't be able to buy or sell, in other words, another great and final economic sanction fulfilling Revelation 13, verse 15 to verse 17. Take a listen, friends. For the past several days, Russians have been lining up at banks and ATMs, hoping to withdraw cash while they still can. That's due to devastating international sanctions directed at Russia's financial sector. Moscow's public transportation department is warning residents they might have problems using Apple Pay, Google Pay or Samsung Pay for their fares because VTB Bank, which is under sanctions, handles those payments. Visa and MasterCard have also blocked multiple Russian banks from their network to comply with sanctions. Economists say all these restrictions are impacting the quality of daily life. Mm, 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 mm. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, are these points clear? And now I want to segue into a brief Bible study. Do you know why? Because individuals are right now praying and waiting for the secret rapture to allow them to escape the crises in the land. Remember, they believe that they won't be around when the mark of the beast hits, the time of trouble hits. They believe in a secret rapture. Beloved, God is allowing these individuals to know the errors of their ways. They have been infused 
with false doctrines. Yes, and it's time to awaken them. Many are waiting for a secret rapture. Look at that, brothers and sisters. Yes, I covered some of this this past Sabbath. Let me move through this. And linked with the secret rapture is left behind. You could take a look at that, friends. They won't be around for the time of trouble. They're raptured up secretly. It's all over, my friends. Very impactful. And what's the point here? Imagine when the mark of the beast hits and these individuals who once were taught and now they believe in a secret rapture and they realize that they're still here. They are still here. They are still here. How would they feel? How would they react? What will they do? And say to their pastors who taught them false doctrines, brothers and sisters. There it is. They won't be around. And beloved, as God's remnant people, we must use these current events as a segue, a stepping stone to educate the people. What we're now seeing are signs of what is to come. And those individuals in the Ukraine and elsewhere who are suffering, it's also a sign that God's people will have to encounter and go through a great time of crisis, a great time of trouble. But God will both protect and preserve his people. Tell them God has a thousand ways to provide for us of which we know nothing. It's coming, brothers and sisters. It's coming. So now, what are those uh, scriptures that many individuals who believe in the secret rapture, believe in the left behind false theories, use to justify their errors? Left behind. We must understand these things so we can educate people and remove their faulty foundation and to destroy their hooks that they're using to hang their doubt upon, doubting present truth. Matthew 24, brothers and sisters, verse 36, brothers and sisters, through verse number 39. What did they say? What do they say, by the way? Verse 39, knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. They're telling us that those who were left behind, those who were left, hmm, are the ones who will be lost, left behind. But that's not what the Bible says contextually. The flood came in the days of Noah. Who were left? Hmm. It's Noah and his family in the ark who were taken away by the flood. Hmm? It's the unrepentant. That's verse 39. You can begin in verse 37. It's verse 39. All right, and tell them, this is no secret. The flood was massive. The flood was enormous. The flood was global. The flood was destructive. Yes, brothers and sisters. A second scripture is Luke 21. My friends, they are going to rail upon their false preachers. You told me that I, am, I, will, I would be raptured up secretly from the crises they're here i'm still here luke 21 verse number 34 they use that scripture to say that some people are going to be unaware of the second coming of christ that's not what that says contextually verse 25 it's a global sign verse 26 a global sign verse 27 the son of man coming in a cloud Great glory. The cloud represents angels, brothers and sisters, which we shall see later on. Put that down. Angels. It's global. It's global. All right. One more text. First Thessalonians chapter 5. When we come to midday power surge, safe to serve, prophesy again, we come to receive substance. Yes, friends. Power. Power for conversion. Power for evangelism. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 2 is what they use. The second coming of Christ will be as a thief in the night. Beloved, just read on. Verse number 3. The key verses now is verse 4 through verse 6. Thief for those who refuse to get ready. 
because no man know exactly the day or the hour. All right, verse 4 says, But you brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. All right, friends. People are aware. And you could read down to verse number 5. All right. Now, let's turn now to Acts chapter 1. Nullifying, diffusing their false teachings. All right. Acts chapter 1, verse number 9 through verse 11. The Bible says the angels told Christ's disciples, This same Jesus that you see taken up from you in a cloud shall in like manner return. Did they see him go up? Yes. Will he return in that cloud? Yes. Look now at Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Beloved, note this now. The clouds represent a symbolic, the, the clouds are symbols pointing to angels. Write down, where am I? Psalm 104 and verse number 3. Put that down, friends. Psalm 104 and verse 3. And put down Psalm 68, verse 17. Read them in that order. All right, brothers and sisters. Psalm 104. Read them in that order. Psalm 104, come on, and verse number 3, and Psalm 68, and verse number 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This is not something secret. How many angels does Christ have? Thousands times ten thousands of thousands of angels. That's not secret, friends. Every eye shall see him. He comes with the clouds. Let's move on. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. This is not something secret. Verse 16. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And by the way, that won't be silent or secret. Why do I say that, my friends? Because Matthew 24 says, when the angels come, they come with trumpets as well. And how many angels are there ringing that trumpet? Matthew 24. And the Bible says in Matthew 24 and verse number 27, have you ever seen hmm, a secret lightning? No. When lightning flashes, everyone sees it. Social also, the second coming of Christ. And now, here comes the finishing nail. The nail in a sure place. Psalm 91. Share this with every person who believe in some secret rapture and some left behind theory that they won't be here in a time of trouble. Also, you can share the exodus, the ten plagues that God preserved and protected Israel. However, Psalm 91, verse 1 says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Where will he abide? Under the shadow of the Almighty. Will God protect his people? Every time I read this, beloved chills cover my body. Verse number 3. God will preserve us from the noisome pestilence plagues. Verse number 5. Verse 6. Verse 7. Thousand shall fall at thy side. 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. So where are God's people? They are right here on the earth. Right here on the earth. Verse number, verse number 10. No evil shall befall thee, neither any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Where are God's people dwelling? Right here on the earth. Hold on. Verse 11. I'll send my angels. To preserve, feed, and protect you. Skip on down to verse number 15. Here it is now. Punchline. Verse 15. He shall, we shall call upon God, and God will answer us. And listen now. God says, I will be with you in trouble. What trouble? The various signs I just read. The pestilences. The calamities. Verse 6. Destruction. It's all here. Verse 10. The plagues. When thousands and ten thousands are dropping dead. 
God says I will be with you. Go with me now to John 17. Yes, my friends, we are called to be God's messengers in the last days. One of the last prayers of Christ before he was crucified is found in John chapter 17, my friends. And what did Christ say in John 17 and verse number 14? These people are converted. They're mine. Verse 15, I pray, I pray, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, not yet, mm -mm. but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil, the time of evil, the perilous times, God will protect us. There's no secret rapture. Keep them in the world until the second coming of Christ. But until then, a time of trouble will come. Protect, preserve. Is this not, my friend, the time of Elijah with Ahab and Jezebel? Let's leave that one for now. Revelation chapter 7, verse 13, verse 14. Who are these? Whence came they? These are they which came out of great tribulation. Washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Now, you remember I said, the statement I began with, I will close with. Look at this, my friends. There it is. Blue words, blue words. You have rulers and statesmen. They all are observing the strained, restless relations that exist among the nations. They realize something great and decisive is about to take place that the world is on the verge of a stupendous crisis. Red word, second paragraph. God's angels are now restraining the winds of strife. But we can see samples of what is to come. That they may not blow until, until, until the world shall be warned of its coming doom. Last phrase, but the storm is gathering, ready to burst upon the earth. What is gathering? A storm is gathering, brothers and sisters. And my wife said, the song that's fitting, the Lord's our rock, in him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Send in your prayer requests, and let's keep God's refugees in our prayers. Our rock in him we hide a shelter in the time of storm secure whatever may be tied a shelter in the time of storm mighty mighty rock in a weary Time of storm, a shade by day.